generate the current that is electricity as the output by these hydropower plants. Now, in these power plants, we will be using the water as a resource. Now, we will be storing this water at higher stages, that is like in dams, we will be situating and we will be storing the water. And our stored water will be added in the kinetic energy whenever the dams are open. That is, the dam gates, whenever the dam gates are open, the water will be coming with high pressure and high speed. And therefore, the potential energy which is in the water will be converted into the kinetic energy because of the motion of the water. And this in turn, this kinetic energy will be transferred or changed into mechanical energy with the help of the tidal equipment. That is, if at all you observe here, this water will be opened up, right? And they will be falling at high pressure and high speed. Whenever these water falls on these wheels, that is the tidal wheels or the turbines, what we are using here. Now, on these, if at all they fall, then there will be a rotation of these blades and thus there will be a generation of the energy. And therefore, this energy is transferred to the dynamo. Dynamo will be converting this into thermal energy. And further, this thermal energy is converted into electrical energy with the help of the generator. And it is given as the three phase supply and two phase supply for households and three phase for industrial purpose. In this way, the conversion of the water that is the potential to dynamic and dynamic to thermal and thermal to electrical energy. This is the chain of transformation of energies. But if you remind, the transfer of energies will certainly have the losses of energy because of transformation from one form to other form. Now we can say that well, there is a conservation of energy principle that is energy neither will be not destroyed, but it is transferred from one stage to the other and minor losses will be occurred. Now let us see the other power plants which uh, has for example in renewable resources and non renewable sources of energy such as nuclear power plants and biogas. We will be discussing them in detail in order to understand the uses of those energies. Let us see the improvements in the technology for using the conventional resources of energy. That means the conventional resources means the resources which are renewable. That means having less pollution and having a greater amount of efficiency then it is said to be as conventional source of energy and let us see the biomass whether it is a conventional source of energy or not now let us see for example the biomass is produced by the help of the decomposition of the waste materials like vegetables and the sewage which are decomposed in the absence of oxygen right when they are decomposed in the absence of oxygen for example let us take that is a uber gas equipment that is we will be placing every cow dung in the first stage that is in first chamber and the cow dung will be filtered off with the help of the it will, that means we will be removing all the waste materials present in the cow dung right and we will be placing the cow dung in the first chamber and it will pass through the tube or funnel and with this it will be passed into the structure like hollow structure it will be and it is uh, placed underground it will be digged up and uh, it is an underground construction in this there will be no oxygen right it will be very close to surface and here this will be passed and here the decomposition of the waste materials such as cow dung vegetables sewage everything will be taken place right because of the decomposition in the absence of oxygen it will lead to the pr production of the gas that is 75 percent of methane therefore it can be said that 75 percent of methane is the gas known as biogas or gober gas which is very useful for household cooking purpose and it is smokeless and at the same time it is having higher efficiencies also and it doesn't need any ash when we burn the wood or charred wood we will be getting ash right when we burn the sticks trees dry dry plants right but in gober gas we will not be having such a result that is ash or anything therefore we can say it is a very useful component with less pollution right and in the same way we will be using charcoal also charcoal also by burning will be not getting that much uh, pollution in the air that means it is not polluted as far as like uh, coal and everything 
and so we can say that charcoal burns without flames right and therefore very less pollution and so charcoal is also preferred for the sake of cooking purpose right and in the same time this biomass that generated by the decomposition of the sewage materials will be used for household purpose for cooking purpose and also for generating the gas which is useful for many other applications also and these are some improvement technologies used in order to convert these uh, the bio materials that means that is conventional sources of energy such as this cow dung and all in order to produce a useful gas which is useful that means we are converting the waste material into a useful energy which can be useful for the people right let us see the conventional sources of energy that is previously we have seen different types of sources of energy such as wind energy tidal energy and also now we are seeing the biomass energy that is the energy produced that is the gas produced is biogas from the biomass that is how we will be seeing in this that is these are the major improvements in the technology of conventional sources of energy now here we will be seeing the tank see this is the structure of the biomass and now in this we will be seeing three stages that is slurry stage this is the first stage and soil stage this is the second stage while coming to the gas tank this is the third stage and the same thing is repeated from the other side also now in this the digester this tank as shown in the figure this is known as the digester as a good example our human body the stomach is the digester for us right in the same manner all the waste of cow dung and all the slurry leaves all things which are dumped there across a side will be taken out and those things all the waste materials and the cow dung all those are known as the slurry and this slurry is kept in the digester this is the digester and it is uh, built in the underground right and it takes around a lot of space it consumes around uh, uh, two square yards of three square yards that is uh, around the tank will take and now this slurry what is kept inside this in stage one in this tank will flow into the digester and the remaining dust particles and everything will be kept uh, and everything will be kept under here for the second stage all the waste materials will be collected here in the second stage only the cowdens everything with water is mixed up and it is thrown into the digester in the digester there is absence of oxygen there is no oxygen is present in there so what will become the anaerobic anaerobic organisms that is which will function in the absence of oxygen are known as anaerobic organisms and these organisms these are microorganisms we can't see them through our naked eye and these organisms will be breaking down the slurry into smaller particles and which results in the formation or production of gases such as methane and it is a major part that is around 75% of this gas includes methane and the remaining gases such as hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide and everything will be formed in minor right minor quantity and now we will be seeing that gas what is generated will be flowing from the gas tank which is above the digester as shown in the figure this is the digester the down part and this is the gas tank which is on the upper part and this will be generating the biogas and the outlet will be collected as shown in the figure and now this gas will be used for multi purpose such as for cooking say and for lightning say and these are the major purposes for what we use this biogas and this the advantages of using biogas are because this biogas is uh, not burning it is not from uh, charcoal or coal right and at the same time it is not burning the wood or it is not going to lead for the deforestation sake also it is just it is turning the waste material that is slurry material into a useful biogas and at the same time the waste what is coming out of this digester at the end of this end of this will be used as a manure or fertilizer for the crops and this fertilizers is uh, because they are acting as a fertilizers because the reason is they are rich in potassium and nitrogen therefore nitrogen and phosphorus are more that is they are rich in 
those squat trees and therefore they are used as a manure for soils in agricultural purpose also and here we are seeing that how this gas is formed because of breaking of molecules that is at higher heating capacity and we will be seeing that there is no smoke no wood no leaves no charcoal and no carbon therefore it is a very good source of production of biogas and it is uh, very useful because it is less pollutating and it is turning the waste into useful and majorly this biogas uh, equipments and this uh, everything will be done in the rural villages because where there is a availability of much of cow dung and we will be frequently seeing in rural areas rather than in urban areas now let us discuss another few technologies which are used in order to improve the conventional sources of energy